Hi guys and welcome back to All Build Up. Today I'm going to be doing a much requested video which is all about the placement of bronzer and blusher. Jules and I often forget that a lot of women feel a little bit overwhelmed about the general placement of these two products so we thought we'd do a little video to help you along. I'm also going to briefly discuss contour and highlight but very very briefly and just for the for the purposes of face shaping. So to start with traditionally there are several different face shapes and depending on what shape your face is you will then know where to place your blush. I don't really subscribe to that. I don't think there are any hard and fast rules when it comes to makeup. I don't think that if you have um, a long face that you can only wear um, blush and bronzer in specific places. I think you need to play around with it, see what makes you feel best, see what makes you look best and take it from there. So with that in mind let's start with bronzer. So the purpose of a bronzer is to, as the name would suggest, bronze your face to add warmth. It's to mimic the appearance of um, having a bit of a suntan to look a little bit healthier, a little bit more golden. So that shade needs to be more brown and that's important when we get to the contouring bit. So as well as making you look tanned and healthy, bronzer also serves to um, accentuate the contours of a face that which otherwise would have been lost um, with your application of foundation, which can sometimes blanket your face and take out all of your natural contours. So it can serve the purpose of being um, a bronzer and a contour, because most people don't have the time to do both day to day, and certainly I don't, and neither does Julia. Um, the one I've got here is the Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer, which is a lovely kind of warm tone you'll see, and I'm just going to show you where I would apply it. This is a Real Techniques blush brush. I like a bigger, fluffier brush for the application of bronzer, just because you're going to be going over a larger surface area. So. You want to apply it on the high points of your face. Literally as if you were looking up into the sun, where would the bronzer hit? It would hit here, it would hit around the, your forehead here, and it, it would probably hit your nose, although I don't put bronzer on my nose day to day. I don't feel like I need to. You will take it kind of here. Placement is going to be on or above your cheekbone, and you're going to gently buff it. I buff it all the way into my hairline and onto my ears as well. I do bronzer before blusher as well, um, I just find that it's easier to warm up my face and then the placement of the blush becomes an easier decision. I also like to run it down my neck just in case there are any colour variances because you don't want to look, you don't want to have a really bronzed face and then a white neck and chest so it's nice to have the continuity. You can also take it around your jaw if you want to like for the slimming purposes if you wanted to, like contouring but um, you don't have to. Okay, so now I've applied the bronzer, you can see that my face has a bit more dimension, it's got a bit more shape. If it's easier for you to remember um, regarding where the placement goes, think of there being a giant three on the side of your face. So it'll run um, from your hairline down onto your cheekbone and then, if you so wish, down onto your jawbone. That should help you remember where the, the bronzer is supposed to go. Then comes blush. The easy way to remember where your blush goes is that there's only a, kind of a specific quadrant of your cheek, you know, in terms of makeup artistry where the blush is supposed to go. So typically where your pupil ends, that is how far the blush goes. If it goes any further in towards your nose, the placement is going to, it's just going to look odd. You want to keep it kind of on the apple of your cheek, which is where you will naturally flush if you start blushing. So this kind of juicier part of your face is where the blush goes. And then also, I would never take blush below my cheekbone. So when you think of it in those terms, you've kind of got this little, little triangle of space here where your blush can go. And also you don't want to take it too high up um, to where your under eye is for texture reasons and also just because you don't naturally flush in that part of your face. So this here is the apple, this kind of fleshy bit. So if you've ever watched makeup videos and you've seen people apply makeup on other people, they always will say, smile for me quickly, just so you can really see where the fleshiest part of someone's cheek is for the application of the blush. When it comes to blush placement on my face, I think about the placement in terms of the tone that I'm wearing. So if I'm wearing something that's kind of a brighter, more pinky blush, so like this NARS Orgasm, which you can see has a, has a real pinky, peachy, tone, I will wear that on the apple because that is closer to the color that I naturally blush. So that would go there for me. But I, I must say I very rarely wear these tones because I don't feel like they really suit me all that much. My favorite tone is kind of a more mauvey, rosy tone, which you can see here in my Hourglass um, Ambient Lighting Blush, which although it looks quite pink, I can see there in the viewfinder, in real life it is much more natural. Those are my favorite tones and I tend to actually wear them on the cheekbone and I blend them into the into the bronzer so that it's a very cohesive fusion of the two colors um, and I find that brings color to the face but also adds to the dimension of the bronzer like I said I don't contour on a daily basis I, I really 
hardly ever contour unless it's a, like a, a really special event. So I find that that placement looks the healthiest and the most natural on me. Jules also, if she's going to wear a brighter blush, she will wear it on the apple, but for um, kind of the more mauvey neutral tones, she wears it actually on her cheekbone for more of a slimming effect. So that will help to really accentuate the cheekbone as well as adding some color to the face. So I'm going to show you one on each cheek. So I'm going to start with NARS Orgasm and I'm going to be putting it on the apple on the left side here. I would say this is, um, as Julia's just pointed out, she said it's a very uplifting placement and it does make you feel, I don't know if this is just in my mind or not, but quite youthful and fresh. So um, this is a lovely option. Why don't I do this more? Okay, so on the other side, I'm gonna be using Mood Exposure from Hourglass. Um, good local dupes for this are the Max Factor Creme Puff Blushes. They are, I would say, almost identical. So um, that's a nice lo local alternative. So this one I'm gonna be taking kind of up the cheekbone can see I'm keeping it away from the under eye area and I'm keeping it above the cheekbone so it's very much just swooping here. So you can see the the kind of the, the placement on the apple is rounder literally more of a ball placement over here and then the Movi one is more of just a, a swipe up the side of the face. To finish just a quick note on contouring and highlighting so these two techniques are used to accentuate and to minimize features that you um, like or don't like about your face. So typically areas that are bigger or um, plumper would be contoured to make them appear um, smaller and slimmer. So on me, I have quite a large forehead. I think that's an understatement. So <laughs> I contour around my hairline to give the appearance of a smaller forehead. So contouring is, is better for creating more dimension in the face, which traditionally can be more flattering. When it comes to contouring and highlighting cheekbones, which is the trend at the moment, you'll find your cheekbone. You can feel it. It's right here. So you would typically then take a cool toned product because a shadow is cool toned. It's not warm toned. So you would use a cool toned shadow. So this is the no, uh, the NYX blush in the color taupe. This is in the old packaging, but you'll see that it has an ashier cool tone to it and that's um, ideal for contouring because like I said before, shadows are um, more cool toned, they're not warm toned. So you'll see the difference um, in the tone between the two here. This is a much more golden brown um, shade and this is more of a purple brown. So for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna show you how to contour your cheeks. I don't do it all that often because I already have quite a pronounced cheekbone, but um, I would use the, uh, this is a Real Techniques contour brush. And then if you've ever watched Charlotte Tilbury's videos, you'll see she says, follow the hollow, and that's exactly right. So you can suck your cheeks in and that will accentuate the line that runs from your ears all the way down. And in terms of placement, I would stop it as well, kind of on the outside corner of the eye. I wouldn't take it too far down. With all of these products, blending is of the utmost importance. You really want to fuse all of the colors together and not be able to see any distinct lines because that you know, defeats the purpose and gives the game away. So it's important that you have the right tools available. You need to have a couple of brushes to help you blend everything together. You really do need to make sure that everything is um, in harmony and it kind of just helps to make the dimension look natural and effortless. So if you have a low hairline and you don't have a five head like me, don't do this. Um, it'll only serve to make your forehead even smaller and it'll just compact your face in a way that is not flattering. If you have a double chin, then do it there. Particularly useful over the festive season, FYI. Helps to hide all those Christmassy sins. Now, if you had a broader nose as well, you could um, contour along the sides and highlight down the middle to make your nose appear slimmer. And then for highlight placement, as the name would suggest, highlight high points of the face. So top of the cheekbones, you can also apply it um, on your brow bone to make your eyes appear larger and to kind of brighten the eye and the corners of the eye, you can add some highlight there. If your nose is broader, like I was saying, down the middle of your nose, um, you can also apply highlight kind of up around the, on top of the brows. So you know how we were talking about a three for bronzer? Think about just the first half of the three or C shape. Um, C for Camilla, remember it like that. Um, C just here, so you can take it just along there. That's a good 
highlight placement. Whether you want to use powders or creams is entirely up to personal preference. I prefer, prefer powders just because they are longer lasting. However, in the summer, I'm a little bit more partial to a cream just because it adds a really nice glow. So I'm just going to show you um, some highlight placement. This is the Wet n Wild Highlighting Powder uh, in Precious Petals, which Julia loves. So I'm just going to take a small fluffy brush. Oh, goodness. The one thing I would say is if you battle with texture um, or if you have a lot of um, fine lines and wrinkles in this area, I would try and avoid highlights just because it will amplify that texture and bring light and attention to it, which is not what you want. So rather go for a slightly lower placement and try not to interfere with this area. Just pop a little tiny bit like just here. Try not to get it too far up. If you want your lips to appear bigger, you can highlight along the cupid's bow because that brings light to the area and makes it appear fuller. Let me show you. This is a powder highlight so you can just, uh, oh goodness. It's yeah, you would normally do it before lip gloss obviously, but anyway. Uh. So those are the basics behind the placement of blush, bronzer, contour and highlight. I hope that you found it helpful. If you have more specific questions, please leave them in the um, comments below and we'll get back to you. Thank you very much for watching and we really appreciate it as ever. We'll see you soon. Bye.